Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're doing my unpopular opinions, reacting to your unpopular opinions. Of course, every once, every few months or so, I'll, I'll be asking you guys in community to, to do this kind of stuff, you know. And maybe next time, I'll do a bit something different as we do unpopular opinions. Um, and yeah, so like I said, guys, just get you guys involved. And I, I really hope you guys do like this kind of stuff, you know, trying to expand the channel around to do different kind of content. And I think this is a very interesting discussion so we're gonna be looking through your opinions i'm gonna be reacting to your opinions whether i agree or not and yeah let's go ahead and get started so the first comment from is from bulgarian map it says suarez and miles clear and benzema Lewandowski. now i don't really think that's an unpopular opinion i think most people would probably agree with you on that now maybe it's unpopular in the sense that he is miles clear because that is i don't think very much commonly said um i do think though most people would agree that suarez is better than benzema Lewandowski. so I, in fact, I do agree. I think Suarez is the con most consistent of the three. Um, but yeah, I mean, Suarez, like, like I said, I don't really know if it's an unpopular opinion. Zidane underachieved at Real Madrid as a player. Yes, I agree with this. I agree because I was looking at his accolades and everything, and he wasn't really that amazing at Real Madrid as he was meant to be. You know, now he was a great player overall. Like, let, let's not keep, let's not kid ourselves in the bush here. He achieved what he needed to achieve, but. You kind of expected more from him when he had, he's this kind of legendary player and that's kind of stuff. You know, he could have won more trophies and wasn't really that amazing goal scoring wise. But, you know, trophies is the big thing for me, at least. Uh, Tottenham aren't a big club, but two league titles and zero Champions Leagues. I think he means Champions Leagues. Yeah, I agree. I don't think Tottenham is a big club. I don't think they are. I think this is a I think um, anyone that tries to put Tottenham as a big club is just is just popularity, recency bias. And yeah, Tottenham for me is not a big club. Uh, football has fallen off. Uh, I don't really entirely agree with this. Now, I do kind of somewhat agree with this. I do agree somewhat that it is becoming boring and very predictable and not as fun as it used to be, you know, and everything. And, but at the same time, though, look at the international football. International football, things are changing so much, you know. That's what I love about football now is that international football, I think, is kind of making me more interested in the club football. Club football, for me, seems very much one-sided and everything. Uh, Charlie John Thomas says, El Hadri could have been there in the all-time goalkeeper debate if he had played for big clubs in Europe consistently. Probably. I think I think if he had played for, like, any of the big clubs in Europe, like, you know, like, say, Real Madrid, Barcelona. Like, put it this way. Would we have a conversation about Kaylor Navas being the best all-time goalkeeper debate? Probably not. We probably wouldn't have the conversation. So, you know, Kaylor Navas making that move to Real Madrid really elevated his career and made him worldwide. Because I can guarantee you right now, Kaylor Navas wouldn't have been as famous if he didn't play for Real Madrid. It's simple facts. Simple facts. So, yeah, I, I think I would agree. And obviously, he's he was instrumental for Egypt's 3P in that con. James Rodriguez could have been the Messi versus CR7 debates if he hadn't been benched at Real Madrid. Now, I don't I think that's a bit far-fetched to what Tari Joe Otoma is saying because Messi and CR7 were very consistent and very, very good. Um, I don't think James could have reached that level. But I think Hamas could have been close. I think he could have been on the level of like Neymar, level of Suarez, level, level of those kind of players. Just the tier behind, below those two, you know, Hazard potentially. So, yeah, I just I just think that for me. So, I kind of somewhat partially agree and somewhat partially disagree. Um, but, yeah, that's just my opinion. Tarjo Matoma says, Salah is a top five Egypt players of all time until he went to Afghan. Abatrika, Al-Hadri, Al-Hassan, Oh hassan and Zidane are my top five. Yeah, I mean, it, it's understandable because, like I said, guys. If you're excusing the fact that, oh, it's okay if you guys want to AFCON for Egypt, you know, no, you can't do that. Because Egypt is the most successful nation in AFCON history. They won seven titles under their history, and no other nation has won that many titles compared to them. So you can't have the same excuse. And remember, Saul has made two AFCON finals, 2017 and 2021, okay? And sure, you, you and also, I would also consider 2019. 2019 should have been a great opportunity for Salah because he was at the peak of his time. He had just come up winning the Champions League with Liverpool. And remember, that tournament was hosted by Egypt at their own state, uh, Egypt, and they went out of the round of 16. So I'm sorry, man, for Salah, man, you underachieved. You underachieved internationally. Now, I get it. You you did get Egypt to qualify World Cup, which is amazing everything. And, you know, that's a tremendous achievement in 2018. Uh, but the issue is that you didn't really do much the World Cup. See, I would have maybe like give him a, a maybe I would have like somewhat excuse if he had made the round of 16 with Egypt in that World Cup, because that would have been incredible. But obviously he didn't. So 
Yeah, I mean, Salah's international career, man, it's looking very, very sketchy. And I'll be honest with you, man. If Salah doesn't, if Salah doesn't get Egypt to like maybe the round in the knockout stage of the next World Cup and potentially, uh, what is it called? Uh, win, the, uh, win the Afcon. Then we're gonna have very uncomfortable conversations. We're gonna have to have very uncomfortable conversations. And I also want to say this before we move on to the next one. Salah hasn't really shown up for Egypt in the Afcon. Like he hasn't really been that amazing. Like I don't really remember many games where Salah single-handedly dragged this team through. Like the only game I think I remember was pretty much against Morocco. And maybe gone in 2017. But that's pretty much out. And yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next one. I spent a lot of time on that comment. Uh, Tara Joe Thomas says, Salah is a bigger Liverpool legend than Gerard. Ooh. Uh, I, I I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Because Steven Gerrard, for me, he's an academy Liverpool uh, player. And it doesn't matter. It, Gerrard, for me, is always going to go down as a Liverpool legend. People are going to have a lot of respect for him. You know, he played for Liverpool pretty much his entire career and then went to LA Galaxy, you know? Salda, for me, it doesn't matter how many trophies, it doesn't matter how many accolades, how many goals, or everything like that. I think Gerard for me, will always be more respected. And Salah, for me, it's just it's just the best. Now, I could maybe agree that Salah is maybe the best uh, uh, foreign player that Liverpool have bought. Maybe I would agree with that. Uh, but as far as, like, a bigger legend, no. I think Gerard is clear. Gerard is clear. Remember, 578 says, Ten Hag is one of the best managers in the EPL, and his reputation has only been stained because he's managing United. Yeah, I would somewhat kind of agree, but at the same time, or I, I don't know if I would be 100% sure. Because you have to keep in mind, because the thing is, we can't play this hypothetical game, right? Hypothetical game is very difficult to play because obviously there's a lot of things you have to change to maneuver to get it perfectly aligned to what we want, right? And I think for Ten Hag, I think for me, as I said, he is a great manager. I'm not saying he is a bad manager, you know. And let's be real. Manchester United, just the, the club itself is a mess. The club itself is poorly run, poorly infrastructure. The, the club is just a mess, more sporting director-wise, the players and everything. So I can't really blame Ten Hag for too much for United because this is what United have been doing for the last couple of seasons, you know. They bring a new manager in. First season goes extraordinarily well, goes beyond expectations. And the second go season goes crap, third season goes crap, and then they hire a new manager, and that's rinse and repeat, right? So, and I think Ten Hag, see, the thing is, I think Ten Hag is almost like Arteta. I think Arteta, you see how Arteta's been doing Arsenal in the Premier League, and I think Ten Hag is very similar. It's just that Ar Arteta's been at uh, um, United, sorry, Arsenal for a longer period of time. I think he came in 2020, whereas Ten Hag came in 2022, 2022. So, He's got more. Re he's got more experience at Arsenal than Ten Hag. And remember, Arteta did terrible at Arsenal. Like I think he finished back-to-back -back seasons eighth place. And then I think that that FA Cup win. I think and then the the season when they made uh, Europa League, they started to really progress as a team. And you know they eventually got top four. And you know here we are right now. So I think for um for Ten Hag, as I said, it, it's it's hard to say because I do somewhat agree and I do think he is a good coach. It's just that United is just so bad. That it doesn't matter how much Ten Hag pushes for the club itself is bad. So, yeah, I think he could be, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be one hundred percent sure. <laughs> okay, uh, Kuna Punjabi's six four one four says new U UCL form, which will be starting next season. Volshi way goes rule in the UCL is the most stupid decision by UEFA ever. Now, I do think those are. I don't think that's really unpopular opinions. Now, the way goals may be unpopular because a lot of people did want the way goals to be removed. I personally like the way goals, so I I am I'm one of those people. Uh, but they have the new UCL format, I think it's generally disliked. So I wouldn't really say it's un oh, unpopular. Um, I think it's actually a popular opinion, what you're saying. And yeah, for me, it's interesting. Uh, B Wig B says, Cole Palmer is the best player in the world. Uh, I don't agree with that. I'm sorry. I feel like for me, Cole Palmer is a great player. He's a fantastic player. And I would probably put him in the top 10 best in the world right now in current form. But for me, he isn't outright the best because I feel like there's some other players that have done it more throughout the season. And Cole Palmer for me, I feel like I feel like there's other players that have been better. Like I'll give you some names. I think Kane has been better consistently throughout the season. I think Somber has been amazing for Inter. I think he's been amazing. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other players. Jude Bellingham, of course, he's been amazing throughout the season. Um, I would also maybe put in Rudiger as well. I think Rudiger's been fantastic. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other players. Um, obviously you got you know these kind of players. So I just think that for me, for Cole Palmer, he I think I would probably agree with this. I think he's the best player in London clubs. He's the best player in London. I would probably agree with that. Just in current form, but no, he's not the best player in the world. I think that's a bit too uh, far fetched um, to say. APEG 100 says Palmer is better than Bukayo Saka. Uh, 
Yeah, I would say on current form, yes. Current form, yes. Now, overall, as a player, that's actually an interesting combo. That's actually very interesting. I think it's a bit... Too, I think I need to see more from Palmer before I make this comparison because it's only been really one season of Palmer that we're getting. Where Saka, I think he's been there. He's been he's been at Arsenal for some time now. Like five years, I think. So, I don't really think it's a good... I don't think we could... I think we need to... I need to see more from Palmer in this overall game because I still believe... Like, this is why I think. I think Palmer might... Saka might be a better... Uh, overall player but i think palmer might be a better goal scorer and i think it might be the big difference between the two you know because i think the two of them kind of play in a similar positions it's just that i think soccer for me offers you more outside of goal score whereas i think palmer is really really effective for goal scoring so yeah matt's attack nine says virgil van dyke's not top five premier league center back full time terry vettage adams very net company and carvalho definitely superior yeah, that's definitely very debatable. That is very debatable, and I think that's an understandable opinion, Matts. And I think, a, a, like I said, I'm not very well. I, I haven't seen those guys play in a long time, so I can't really comment too much. But I, I definitely would agree that Ferdinand is definitely better than Terry, I think, and Vintage. So I think for – uh, it's just it's just the thing, this match is just people are recency bias. You know, people forget the legendary center backs we've had in the past. And, yeah, I think Virgil van Dijk, you can make argument he is not top five center, center back of all time. Now, you can make argument he's top 10. I think he's definitely top 10. But top 5, that's very debatable. Cherry Colorado says, Argentina is such an overrated team. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't agree. I don't agree. I just I completely disagree. Because if they're so overrated, how do they win the World Cup and Copa America at back-to-back -back, uh, tournaments? Right? So, no, they're not overrated. Now, maybe they'll be overrated in the future. And I do think that in the future. And before, let's be real. I would have said this. Before the Copa America, yes, they were overrated. Before the Copa America, they were overrated. They were too top heavy, and they weren't balanced as a team. But now you can see this team actually has some, it actually has some chemistry. Actually has a cohesive work unit, and it's not just Messi. You know, people obviously think Messi is a huge. Obviously, Messi plays a huge part, but there's other players that have been amazing too, like Martinez. You know, obviously, uh, uh, Romero, the Molina, uh, Taglafico, Acuna, the Palacios. Uh, sorry, not Palacios. Um. This guy, I forgot his name. Uh, uh, the DM, who's the DM? Yeah, yeah, that he's been good as well. I forgot his name at the top of my head. Um, but yeah, I mean, for um, uh, for um, Argentina man, I don't think they're overrated. I think they rightfully earn it. Patrick, the coolest fan, says pitch invasions during the during the game. I know, in my opinion, most of European coaches pitch invasions are not allowed, but at the end of the game, where a team wins promotion, wins the championship, wins the league, everyone is allowed to invade the pitch at home. Yeah, I think that's an agree agreeable one, and I think most people would allow that. In fact, I think that's actually commonly followed, Patrick. Like, whenever I see matches, because I just saw Bayern Leverkusen win the Bundesliga last weekend, they were able to storm the pitch. You know, they had no issues with it because, you know, it's a historic moment, you know. So, in general, it's not allowed, but only for historic moments. So, I think that makes sense, and I don't think it's really unpopular. Sebastian AK1891 says, PSG has smoked the Premier League with how bad the league is. Okay, first of all, let me just say this right now. <laughs> Sebastian, Sebastian EPL is still better than Liga, and they're like, I for me PSG, I I I don't think PSG would destroy the Premier League. I don't think they would. In fact, I would even bet you this right now, and uh, maybe we'll, maybe I'll do this future simulation video for my members. We put the PSG in the Premier League. How would they do? Because I'll keep it a stack with you guys. If if you put PSG in the Premier League, I don't think they'll get they won the league. I can guarantee that right now. I can guarantee you that right now. Do they even finish top four? Now they should. They should, given how bad the other teams are, like Arsenal, Man City, Liv Arsenal. Sorry, Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool. They should. They're better than Aston Villa. They're better than Spurs. They're better than Chelsea. They're better than Man United. But are we for certain saying that PSG finished fourth? That like that's you know what that's a good interesting combo, uh, interesting it's a bad, a topic to have. Maybe we'll do that as a simulation. But I can guarantee you right now, PSG would definitely would not win the Premier League. Uh, your second point is KDB is not even top twenty best center mids of all time. That is a very difficult one. I have to look into that. Um, like I said, um, I mean, because I'm trying to think some players that are better than him. Obviously, Modric is better. Iniesta is definitely better. Xavi is better. I think Gerard's better. Probably Ger is Gerard better? Potentially. Scholes, I think, is better. Um, Pirlo is better. I know Xavi, Iniesta, Modric, and Pirlo. Those four are definitely better. Those four are definitely better. Um, but yeah, I mean. I think I think it's, I think ADB is one of the best Premier League uh, players in the midfield eras and the Premier League, but I don't know about all time. All time, I'll have to think about it. Varun says EPL ain't all day yet. Yeah, I, I personally, for me, my thing with EPL is that it's a very popular league, and there's nothing that's going to change that. 
It's just that for me, the quality wise it isn't the best. That's just my opinion compared to other leagues. It's it's very popular and I respect it. And I think it is a good league. It's probably the second best to me, but it's not outright the best to me. But you know, like I said, we all have our different opinions. Set ball says English fan coach is very mid, not terrible, but you'll find better atmospheres like happy European tough flights. Oh yeah, I one hundred percent agree with this. I think this is a this is an opinion I agree with this because I was looking I was I was actually talking to this with my friends with the other days a few days ago. If you look at the European atmospheres, the biggest one for England is probably Anfield. I think the San Siro. I think they'll I think the Bernabeu. I think the Camp Now. I would even say the the uh the Sunoduna Park. And I would say the Galatasaray Stadium. I would even say the Red Star Belgrade Stadium. Like many of the stadiums, the top flights of European football, like the top clubs, have a, probably a better atmosphere than Anfield. Now, it's not to say Anfield is terrible or mid or anything. It's just that it's not that good, you know. Um, and yeah, English fan culture, I agree. It's not that it's mid. And Reich Tosbell says South America produces uh, better talent than Europe. Zidane is both. Oh, okay. Actually, let's start with the first comment. South America produces better talent than Europe. Yeah, I would agree actually, because look at the South American talents we have coming through. We have Escavari. We have Andre, we have Victor Roque, Endrick. Like, I look at the European talents we have now. We got Musiela, we got Pedri, we got Yamal. Like, don't worry, those are quality players, but I think South America, and what I really like about South American players is that they have the tech, they have the technique, they have the flair, the skills, the individual brilliance. Like, for me, the European talents, they don't really usually have that. Now, obviously, I think Yamal might be an exception because Yamal looks to have those kind of uh, skills that the uh, South Americans have. But in general, I think the South American produce better talent. So even though this is unpopular and I think many people would agree, I actually agree with this. I think this is actually agreeable. And now Rang says Zidane is overrated both as a player and manager. Now, we already talked about the players, so feel free to go back in the video. Now, as a manager, okay, as a manager, that's very interesting. Zidane is overrated as a manager. See, I'll, let me put it this way, Rank. That first stint of Real Madrid, I didn't really give them that much credit for because I think that Real Madrid team was amazing. You had like the likes of Modric, Carvajal, Navas. Like that Real Madrid team was stacked. They were able to win the three-peat. Now, a second stint, I'll give it credit for because that Real Madrid team was considerably worse. They did, lost Ronaldo. They lost, um, they lost Ronaldo, one of their best players, and they were able to win the league on the defensive record. And they were able to win the league as underdogs because remember i think barcelona favorites that time because remember barcelona i think had won two league titles back to back if i remember making a mistake i think if i remember correctly and we were on course to do a three-peat for the league titles so i know barcelona is really bad this season so i don't know how much credit can get and then remember zidane did get real madrid to a champions league semifinals in an injury plague team and only lost to chelsea so yeah i think for me zidane i will say for his first ten definitely overrated but a second I don't think it was overrated. I don't think it was overrated as a manager. You know, I, I just think that for me, but it's really hard to say rank because we haven't seen Zidane to coach outside of Real Madrid. We haven't seen it yet, and it's very difficult. So I think for Zidane, as I said, this is just my overall opinion. I think for his first stint, Real Madrid, he was overrated. And then his second stint, I will give him his credit. I thought he would, I think I thought he did a decent job. And then finally, the last comment we got here is from MP7 Games says. City have a top three players in every position except for left back and right wing. So when you look at matches of City, let me take a zoom that for you guys. Um, because obviously FB7 is coming at the very bottom. Uh no, I can't. Uh okay, whatever. Well, I'll, I'll you guys can see on the community tab post. I'll put the community tab post in the link in the description. But yeah, I'm Let's look at this, right? So, goalkeeper for me, is Ederson top three players in the world right now, goalkeeper? I don't think so. I don't think so, personally. Um, left back. Who's a left back? It's Ake. Ake, yeah. I think you can make an argument. Ake's probably top three. Center backs, yeah, I'd probably agree. Right back, I'd probably agree. CDM, yes, obviously. Center mid, yes. Cam, yes. Well, actually, center mid. Well, they don't really play with center mid, center mids, to be honest with you. Oh, actually, so so MP7 says left back or right wing. No, I think Ake is one of the best left backs in the world because I look at the other left backs we have. We have Nuno Mendes. Nuno Mendes is up there and uh, Theo Hernandez. For me, Alfonso Davis is in the top three best left backs in the world right now. I don't think he is. Um, and Cancelo. Cancelo is a bit debatable, but I think Ake is a better player than Cancelo, in my opinion. And the right wing, Doku, yeah, I would agree. I think right wing for sure is not really top three because Doku, Grealish, 
Yeah, I, I would probably rather take Salah. I'd probably rather take Messi. I'd probably rather take uh, Rodrigo. Actually, no, Rodrigo's more of a left winger. Yeah, I, I think right wing is uh, fair enough. So, yeah, thank you guys for commenting your opinions, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. So, please remember to like and subscribe. And let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And, and, and do you guys want to see more of this? Let me know, man. I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out. So um, we have two more opinions I wanted to record because my friends um, wanted to get their opinions in full. And I already just recorded the main video. So I just figured why not just add these two additional ones towards the end. So uh, the first one we got here from my friend TNS says, uh, Pep is overrated as a manager. Mm, this is an interesting one. This is an interesting one. I kind of understand what you mean by this one because he hasn't really done it at a team that, you know, needed a rebuild because all those teams he has coached before, they were like top teams of the league. So, you know, like Man City, uh, Bayern Munich, and Barcelona. We haven't seen Pep coach a team like a Porto, for instance. We haven't seen a Pep coach a team like a Roma, for instance. You know, we don't know how Pep would do. But at the same time, though, you cannot deny that his accomplishments of those three clubs have been amazing. Like, he's achieved so much in all three. Now, maybe Bayern, he underachieved the most of the three. But still, like, you know. So, for me, I understand what my friend is talking about. But at the same time, though, he is still a very good manager. And there's still no doubt about it. And I still think he's one of the best managers in the world. But, yeah, I, I do kind of agree that we need to see more from him coaching inferior clubs. And then the last one we have here it is that Johan Cruyff is better than both um, Pele and Maradona. Now, this is a very interesting conversation. I think in terms of technique, in terms of talent level, he's probably better. But no, I, I'm sorry. I think Maradona and Pele, I'm sorry to say, they won a World Cup. And for me, that cannot, you can't, you can't put your hand quite above those two. You just can't, you know. And as much as I, you know, want to give them the benefit, the doubt, everything, I'm sorry, Johan Cruyff, he's a great player and all, but I think Pele and Maradona is better. You know, so I, I don't really agree with that one. But, you know, I it's a respectable opinion, and I think it is understandable because he had so much talent, and he was obviously one of Barcelona's best players, and obviously the reason why Barcelona even exists today. So, obviously, he has a huge contribution, but I think Pele and Maradona, for me, achieve more, and I think they're going to be more world more famous. So, I hope you guys did enjoy, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.